Welcome back, everybody. This is part two for issue 38. We're going to get started prepping the boarding ramp, so let's get going. All right, so we're back. We got this washed and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and attach this. I'm still debating on whether or not I should attach the foot part. The, the part that has me questioning it is the fact that um, I have to prime it and I don't want it to get gunked up, right? So, um, of course, then the question is how, how do I make sure that this gets primed after the fact? So, I don't know. I'm gonna, that's going to be a last second decision after I attach these other two pieces here. Let's go ahead and get our glue out here and see how this goes. So we're just going to put some glue right down inside of here. And I want a decent amount of glue to be in there because, I mean, not that there's going to be a whole lot going on there, but I sure don't want these pieces coming off, right? So, this one goes on this side, and this one goes on this side, somehow, there we go, and I had thought about uh, using some putty and filling these gaps and stuff, but I just don't think it's necessary, and uh, basically, I just don't feel like doing it. <laughs> so, it would probably look a little bit better, but I'm perfectly okay with how that's going to look anyway. So, that was quick and easy. So, the question is, will I be able to prime this? And painting it won't be a problem, because I can kind of really control the amount of paint that I've got going on here. But the question is priming it, I think what I would have to do would be to lightly prime this part and, of course, move it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to need a little bit more glue because I used up the little dollop that I put out here. We don't need a lot because we're not talking about much. So, the book talks about just putting, you can kind of see these little dimples. Here's one here and one back here. You can kind of see them. There you go. If I turn it just right, you can see them. So, that's where you're supposed to put the glue. So, that way it does not cause any issues with the glue um, getting into the uh, into the, uh, rest of it. So, let's just try that. Because you don't want glue to get in the hinges, of course. And, of course, I did not need that much glue. But, I put a lot of glue on. Uh-oh, uh-oh. See, there's what I've been worried about. And there we go. I don't know if that glue stuck or not. No. It's not even touching it. If it is, it's minimal at best. Oh, come on. So there's a problem. So we'll have to put a bit more glue in there to actually get it to do its job. Comedy of errors. 
looks like I picked the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. There goes my thumb, getting glued down. Ah. Yeah, see, this isn't totally not working. Totally not working at all. I don't know how in the holy hell anybody else was able to glue this thing together. I don't even know if I'm putting enough pressure on this thing. Okay. Just going to hold this here. We'll cut to when I'm done holding it. <laughs> All right. So I think it's glued. I'll just let it sit there for a moment or two. We're just going to double check to make sure I didn't do something wrong. So fit the ramp extension at the end of the ramp so that the two small lugs on the ramp arrowed fit in the matching recess. Test fit the ramp extension hinge, part 5, over the ramp extension so that it traps the lugs and allows the ramp to pivot. Re repeat step 2, this one, applying a small amount of glue to the areas shown to ensure glue does not get into the hinge. So basically those two areas. Unless it's meaning just the flat part, not in the dimple. Well, that'd be embarrassing. And then they painted it with a brush, but I don't want to have the brush streaks. So we're going to try to paint it not using a brush. We'll see how that goes. So let's go. Big G, little O. Well, it's on there. I must have had enough glue that it seeped out of those dimples and actually held. <laughs> oh, that's not stressful. Now, what I could do, but then I'd be afraid when I go to sand it, it would cause all kinds of problems. I could put some glue in this seam along here and then sand it off, but ain't nobody got time to screw it up after that because. I would be afraid that as I'm sanding it, this would wiggle back and forth, pull the whole thing off, and then it'd be SOL. All right, so we have that done. I'm going to go get this prepped. Uh, well, to prep it, I'm going to mask this backside. So let's do that real quick. The thing with this is I need to be able to paint both sides, so I think if I hold it up like that, I should be able to, of course the airbrush or the air can will probably blow that down, so. Alright, let the stress begin. See you guys when it's all primed. Welcome back everybody, here we are with uh this primed so i just want to touch in real quick the last part of the video that you watched that was actually recorded prior to me realizing that i was going to have to break this up that it was going to take up too much time so that is why it uh 
that's why the it, it, the intro is a little bit different and all that kind of stuff and also the ending of part one was so different i hadn't recorded anything so um so now we're going to get to this part so got a couple things that's going to happen here so first thing we're going to do is we're going to mask this off so that way we can paint this outside part uh I got a little bit of extra paint here. I'm going to see if I can't clean that up a little bit from the primer. And uh, hopefully that will work without too much issue. We'll see how the primer sands. Uh, we may need to give it another priming, but uh, we'll see how it sands. Um, hopefully well. Uh, we just want to knock it down a little bit. Uh, not so much that we get into the, the, that's a little bit better. I've got a little bit extra over here. Need to sand off. Nothing major. Just a little bit. That's better. All right. So that's pretty good. Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. I need to remove this. So you can see how well that worked. Um, that worked really, really well. I'm pretty happy with that. Just make sure we got all the little excess cleaned up, and I think we do, which is cool. So what we'll do is we'll mask this center piece, and um, I think what, what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. So I'll mask, I'm gonna, just going to mask right along these rails like this and uh straight up and then we'll mask a little bit here so uh the most of this is going to be covered with this part here i think that's how it goes something like that yeah like like this uh or like this one or the other it's going to go like that i think so this is going to cover up the majority of it anyway so because that's covering it up uh there's no need to really go crazy with how we're going to do it that's weird that the, maybe this goes on. I don't know, it's very odd that the, the holes aren't quite lining. That's better. Anyway, we'll figure out how to do this part after we're done. So, anyway, let's uh, get this masked out so we can get it painted. We'll paint the outside this color here. I've mentioned that a couple times. And that will allow us to... Uh, leave this inside and then I've got an effect that I'm going to try here my daughter felt like this needed to have some texture to it not be smooth so we're going to do that so let's go ahead and start masking
there we go I think that takes care of everything and so what I'm going to do is this top part will get white and then I'll spray this part here as well I thought about spraying this part but I'm going to leave that for when I put it all together but I'll spray this part white uh, but I want the top to get white and the reason why I primed it all is because if I get overspray I'm not going to sweat it I didn't want to have to make sure that I had an absolute perfect uh, uh, masking job when I w went to go paint the outside so um, this this will work out really well I don't have to worry about it, any of that so uh, let's go ahead and go get this painted when we come back this will get painted or be painted and we'll get this attached and we'll be all done with this episode alright see you in a little bit Welcome back everybody. So here we are. We've finished painting this. So as I mentioned before, I just wanted to, I was going to leave this primered and I was going to paint the rest of this. So as you can see where I masked around, uh, you can even see where I masked these little parts. Um, the coverage was a little bit iffy on like these holes and stuff. Uh, not the best, but Every place else it covered really well. I, I did have to kind of, you know, double check. Paint, uh, spraying these sides is always, I've noticed these smaller areas, always a bit of a challenge to make sure that you get good coverage there. But it looks pretty good. Um, I felt like the, the masking lines are pretty, pretty solid. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. And then if you look here, the whole face is going to be the outside color which is what I wanted and then, but if we open it up it's not so uh, I like that now what we're going to do is take my daughter's advice because she knows more about art than I do and she wanted t some sort of texture on this so we're gonna see what we can do about that I don't know a very good way to do it so we're just gonna Fumble fart our way through it. So I'm using, uh, not a sponsor, uh, Duck brand um, painter's tape. And this was suggested to me by uh, Judah, uh, my good friend Judah. She said this is the best tape. She's, she's uh, world renowned as a painter, and so she knows her stuff. Uh, no, but she did recommend it, and so I tried it. Now, this is Duck Brand, and this is a lot heavier. It's still blue, but it's a lot heavier like it's like regular masking tape. So I was a little bit leery, but I think this newer stuff is thinner like regular uh, painter's tape. So uh, we have that going for us. All right, so even though this is going to be really close to the same color, uh, this is what we're going to use. I thought about using something a little slighter, slightly darker or lighter or you know either or uh, just to give it some a little bit of extra color. But then I said, I don't know if we need any more color. So I don't know if any of you guys back in the 80s and 90s stenciling in your house was kind of a big thing. So you would take these little sponges and uh, they were, I think they were natural sponges most of the time was what you would use. And you would take those and then you would um, take your stencils and you'd just pat it on.
There we go. Uh, so, I don't know if it gave it any more texture. You can kind of tell where I did it, like right down the middle, which I think is fine. It kind of gives you an aspect of where they walked and stuff. So, I'm cool with that. So, yeah. And I thought that we'd probably end up having to let this dry a little bit, but I don't see that happening either. So here's where we're at. We got these parts. Do, 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 do. We're going to attach these ones here first. Uh, like this. Okay. Yeah. So I can see the little, you can see a little gap here. So it's going to go back like this. <laughs> So normally, when you have Loctite, uh, the, anytime I've ever used it, it's like, you know, one of those ones that's already got the natural point and you cut the end off and then whatever. But this looks like freaking lip, lip balm. Look how that is. So that's why I'm going to get some tape and the micro brush to apply it because uh, <laughs> putting that on these little bitty screws, yeah, right. Now, these things off on the side, I don't know if that's by design or what. Okay, movement there. Movement there. Okay. There's definitely some friction there. That's got to be that by design. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and fix this bad mamma jamma. Okay, so to attach, it tells you to clean those up too late. Look at there. We have a fully functional Death Star system. Oh, wait. We have a fully functional boarding ramp. And these little things go up into here. So, like many of the things on this, I research a lot of the looks and stuff. And that's why I had debated whether or not to do this a darker color and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, one of the things that I found is that these little pieces uh, are, I think they're supposed to be lights, but they're very either black or like very much pewter like. So that's kind of interesting. So, just like a little kid playing with your toys. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap here, which is a little bit disconcerting, a little bit annoying. I don't know if there's a way to suck that up a little bit. Because then it also leaves a little bit of a gap here. I'll see if there's a way to, to uh, do anything about that. Maybe I can loosen these and kind of push this whole thing forward. That'll give it a little bit 
I've got these screws back here loose enough so I mean it's going to go back and forth but it's definitely not on those screws it's definitely not moving enough and obviously these ones where it's attached to uh, those fit right on the the little lugs so there's nothing to do there either so we'll we'll have a look all right so that is the conclusion of issue 38 uh, obviously this is part two and so um, yeah so this was what we got in this issue next time we're actually going to get the motor for it and so that will be interesting but i'm guessing we're going to put together these pistons and all that kind of stuff all the stuff to actually hold the ramp up and down and then we'll do the motor later so that's what we'll be working on um i do have uh something i wanted to say not my video related but if you did not watch um uh autos automatics uh late stream show if you did not watch that then uh he just finished up the final season last night or the first season sorry uh he had the finale for the first season last night and um think of it as just like the tonight show but it's a live stream so he, he calls it the late stream he does it once does it once a week uh of course with the first season being over um, he's going to take a bit of a break, think about his, what he's going to be doing later and, and all that kind of stuff and just take a break because there's a lot of work for him. But if you're not watching it, definitely go check it out. It is amazing. Uh, he's got some, a couple of, uh, other people that help him on it and, uh, they all together do a great job. Uh, obviously Otto's the, uh, driving force of the whole thing and uh but he brings on people interviews them has little skits that he does and uh it's a great great thing so i highly recommend it and uh, like i said you're missing out if you're not going and checking it out so all right with that i'm going to say thank you very much for watching and may the force be with you always